Welcome to the Dome here at this first day of ASG 2025. And we'll be starting with uh, a talk by Dong Su Park on introducing Azure Init, a minimal provisioning agent written in Rust. Thank you. Azure Init, a new project, minimal provisioning agent written in Rust. So I'm going to introduce myself first. So I uh, was previously at Kinfolk, and after acquisition uh, three and a half years ago, and I've been part of Azure Colnex team of Microsoft. Also, I am part of the Flatcar Container Linux maintenance team. And uh, usually, I have been tracking um, new security issues or uh, you know, other release management and so on. Recently, I was excited to learn Rust programming language, and I've been uh, involved in UERS project, uh, on another re-implementation of update engine Rust. So what is Azure Net? Um, it is another uh, implementation of um, provisioning agent in uh, Azure Linux. So uh, Linux uh, provisioning in Azure, and it is a re-implementation of provision agent part of WA agent, WA Linux agent, uh, WA agent in short. So it should be a minimal drop-in repl replacement of provisioning part of this uh, WA agent, and it is written in Rust. And it is quite a new project, and I want to uh, first uh, talk about the uh, part of WA uh, agent, a uh, legacy part and the extension part first. So is WA agent consists of two different agents. So first is provisioning agent and the second one is extensions agents. So provisioning agent uh, has been uh, there for a long time and actually at the time, uh, at this time uh, is legacy and very little used by uh, most distros. And in most cases, cloud in it does the job in uh, other uh, other apps like uh, Ignition uh, exist. However, yeah, cloud in it is the, uh, dominant in the market. And the second part, ex extensions agent. It, uh, this part is still used by many distros and however this uh, ecosystem is quite fragmented and it results in huge binary size in many cases and it has been yeah, yeah long uh, new issues uh, for a long time so um, I'm going to show a diagram uh, this so the first uh, was the extension part, and the second was the pro uh, provisioning part. So it's the second part will be replaced by our uh, new implementation, Azure in it. And uh, the, the extension part will be still uh, um, in uh, Python, implemented in Python, and um, still be in Python. However, the Azure in it part will be Rust. And, uh, yeah, extensions, uh, uh, so, yeah. I'm going to uh, go to the brief history of Azure in it. And it started as an internal, uh, an intern project uh, by uh, Kate Jacobson, Microsoft. And it, at the time it was named Azure Provisioning Agent. Uh, it was a little long name. And after a while, Kate, uh, left Microsoft for a while, and no one uh, will uh, go, uh, maintain it. And yeah, uh, we, uh, Azure Core Linux team, thought about that, uh, uh, picking on this project and uh, maintaining it. And after a while, um, it was renamed to Azure in it, a much shorter name. And it was uh, open sourced with. Um, my MIT license uh, early this year, and also tagged with one, uh, 0 1 watt on pre alpha release. Uh, it is quite a new project. 
why do we choose Rust as a programming language? And for us, it uh, was the biggest reason was uh, minimal binary size. And it, uh, using AA agent, which was written in Python, so in many cases, um, it, its dependency, dependency list uh, has a huge list of uh, Python packages. And many Python runtimes can result in um, huge binary size. So uh, we wanted to avoid that. Uh, so by uh, implementing in Rust, and the second reason is obviously memory safety. So uh, you already are aware of so many projects migrating into Rust uh, and, uh, and giving up C or C++ because of the memory safety issues uh, happening since decades. And yeah, that was a huge reason. And, uh, and uh, Rust community support is also not bad, so growing fast, and also uh, it uh, was a good uh, one of the good big reasons. And currently, uh, Azure Net is not directly linked to Azure ASIC for Rust uh, from Microsoft. However, uh, in the future, uh, possibly might be integrated with this SDK. So it was also nice. Nice option, and also for us, a good opportunity to learn programming language. I'm going to go through a brief directory tree. So, uh, lib Azure Init source code consists of two big parts: lib Azure Init and uh, actual binary SLC. So, lib Azure Init consists of the uh, common library parts, which will be probably shared by uh, other projects which will need our future. Or, uh, so it consists of many public functions and uh, might be uh, yeah, consistent with uh, API design. And the SLC is actually just a small uh, main binary which is linked against to the common library, lib Azure Net. And lib Azure Net itself uh, has other, uh, several parts. Uh, so for example, provision part, configuring user and group, and SSH key and password and host name and so on. So uh, yeah, that is the big part of uh, this uh, lib Azure Net library. And IMDS communication is also another, uh, another uh, Big part. Uh, IMDS is instance metadata service. Inside uh, Azure VM, you can simply uh, access to the IMDS. And wire server is actually used only for Azure extensions. Um, yeah. However, it was also needed. Media uh, it deals with uh, some uh, local mount or uh, something like that uh, for configuration. And config directory and test directory, those are usually for uh, our uh, internet uh, E2E test. And GitHub actions are also present. Uh, I'm going to go through our uh, uh, so API, builder style API, currently only uh, in the provisioning part. However, it is nice because for example, if you imagine a new, uh, create a new function, provision new, and call the function with many possible options, like uh, 10 parameters, then you can create uh, 10 different parameters. And uh, if, even if you only need one parameter, and nine other rest are not necessary, so you, you need, still need to give all the 10 parameters that is not sustainable and it is not so good for maintainability. And uh, so this is what we came up with. Um, but builder methods are added uh, up when only when it's needed. And uh, each builder method is assigned to the provisioners. 
So, for example, hostname provisioners and user provisioners and provi password provisioners. Right? So, it is be very uh, yeah, neat design. And yeah, unit test. I'm going to talk about that. Also, uh, this is just to, um, not so special to our project. Uh, so any uh, Rust project or any uh, modern language project and has a similar design. And uh, if you create a new feature and you create a new function for that, and you want to test it uh, right away with the uh, basic function functionality, and uh, you simply create another function uh, like that. So then you write a simple test function like that. So for example, here, provision SSH uh, is a feature function which was just added. And you added another function for a uh, unit test. And you prepare some user and home and directory and public keys and pass it to provision SSH and finally assert uh, if it really, uh, uh, the result is really the expected one. And you can simply run cargo test command line, yeah, to run the unit test. And another aspect is end-to-end -end test. So this is a little tricky, and it is currently semi-automated. And the first step would be creation of a thick image, a shared image gallery uh, image uh, of Azure. So if you run image uh, creation script, then you uh, automatically create a resource account, a storage account, launches a virtual machine with the given distro image, uh, in this case, uh, by default Ubuntu image, and it will create an publish Azure Stick image definitions and versions. And after that, you uh, ensure that this Im uh, image, Stick image definition is published. Then you can actual, actually run an end-to-end -end test, make e tweet test command. And that will automatically run and launch, uh, launch the virtual machine. and builds functional test binary and copies into the target machine. And all the functional tests will run in the remote virtual machine. OK, I will show you a short demo about that. This is a recorded demo. Yeah, this is the first step of the E2 test, and you can just, uh, just uh, I, can, I have to do that. In, image creation script is running, and it uh, automatically creates a, uh, builds binary and creates a resource group and a storage account, and uploads the image, and publishes uh, to the Azure Stick Gallery, and yes, that's uh, running, and yeah, it, it's done uh, auto uh, successfully. And you want to uh, check uh, if the uh, the Stick uh, image would be published uh, with the correct info correct ID, now you can see that a ID is there. And you, you want to run actual e tweet test from that point on, and you have to fetch the ID. This is the command. So VM image should be uh, specified with Azure Stick image definition list command. and. The ID would be given as an VM image environment variable, and you will finally run e tweet test. And you will, uh, it will also automatically cr uh, create a virt virtual machine and uh, runs functional test binary remotely. Yeah, it has succeeded. Yeah, 
出す前でも Yeah, let's talk about some challenges、uh, we have met、uh, in the last month.、Uh, the, uh, the first one is minimum supported Rust version issue.、Um, so you want to use the shiny new feature was just published by the、uh, new Rust compiler, like 181, then you will just update your Rust version. That will be、uh, perfect. and No, no need to worry about、uh, um, other things, but it is not that simple in reality because some development environment or CI、uh, pipeline, those could be still stuck with some old Rust versions. So it might be 163 or 68 or one whatsoever. Then you, you have to、uh, support both recent for a stable version and the, the old roster version. That's the issue here. And it is tricky to deal with such、uh, corner issues with all possible distros. And、uh, for now,、uh, compromise would be support up to、uh, roster version、uh, 12 months ago, like 171. However, it is also、uh, not perfect、uh, at the moment because we have to tr-、uh, keep track of this Rust version changes and feature changes. And there is no perfect solution right now, but there is a work in progress PR、uh, which is available in、uh, upstream Rust. And this is、uh, available, and you can yeah, pr-、um, try it. And another one is. Builder style API that was、uh, in the provisioning agent I、uh, introduced. However, it,、uh, using that would be really nice. However,、uh, we have to deal with all other, all other possible options for distros. And in this case,、um, we need to think about integration options. And this is a huge、uh, challenge in the future. And the functional test,、uh, yeah, semi automated, and I showed with the demo. And the nightly CI is、uh, running internally only, internally since a few weeks. And however, it is not available with、uh, the public、uh, pull request. And on demand, it should be running. And we need to figure out how to、uh, enable this one.、Uh, While preventing certain abuse cases, security concerns, and so on. Yeah, there is an open discussion issue. Future work would be first coordinated with WA Linux agent folks. So,、uh, WA agent、uh, needs to be decoupled、uh, from the extension part. And then, after that, we need to do some release coordination future,、uh, for our future release. And, Uh, we need to、uh, add more documents,、uh, both for、uh, just the normal development documents and,、uh, and the Rust docs. So, this is native Rust API docs. And finally, the provisioning telemetry. So, this is、uh, another、uh, new feature. Its, its goal is to assist with provisioning issues without access to the remote VMs. So, there is an open pull request. And yeah, feel free to go to that. And I have to、uh, say huge kudos to community members and contributors in this project. And yeah, thank you for listening to my talk. Is there any question? Let's, fa- let's thank Dongsu for his talk. So, are there any questions? Hey. So, with the minimal、uh, required Rust version,、uh, I would think that you could build with a、uh, new version and then distribute the well, essentially statically linked binary without any trouble everywhere, even on older systems. So, why do you have the requirement of supporting older Rust? Yeah, a good question. And actually,、um, Azure Linux was the big、uh, reason. Azure Linux was、uh, previously CBR Mariner, and it is actually big、um, as 
the first uh, first level support uh, for Azure, and those uh, development uh, environment stuck with the older version. And yeah, it, we need to yeah, talk about the middle ground uh, between the uh, distro version and yeah, we we'll think about that. Thanks. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, thank you for, for your talk. Is there any existing system that already use Azure in it? Um, right now, uh, it's a kind of proof of concept, and yeah, we are doing implementation. Um, the, we are trying to support uh, for uh, major distros like Ubuntu or Rare, and Azure Linux as well, and then it will be actually used. And recently, Azure Linux also uh, decided to uh, go for Azure in it. Yeah. Thanks for the talk. Uh, I have a question about the Builder Style API. Is it something that is compiled on the target machine, or is it compiled uh, before when you prepare the OS? It is. Uh, actually, just uh, you can just run it in local locally, so you can build it locally. This is uh, actually a general design of API. You can um, see any other projects. So I'm curious. Uh, the previous version of this was written in Python, and uh, you described some of the benefits of like. And memory safety uh, being a, a big advantage of Rust, but Python is not terribly memory unsafe. It has other issues, but uh, what other motivating factors actually drove you to actually write? What, what um, other benefits do you expect to get out of uh, the rewrite? Sorry, I didn't hear the last. Uh, what What do you expect to get out of the rewrite uh, other than the, the change in language? Um. Uh, so. Uh, the first uh, about the first uh, one. So, um, uh, actually, uh, I wrote that memory safety issue uh, is uh, uh, important for Rust uh, uh, introduction be uh, because many projects are migrating from the older uh, programming language like C and C++. That was uh, why I wrote that. And actually, we if, if you want to compare with uh, Rust with Python, then of course, uh, that would, might not always be true. That's okay. uh, your, uh, that's correct. Yeah, thank correct. you. How big is the um, difference between the Python and the Rust implementation regarding the needed disk space afterwards? Um, you mean the binary size? Yeah, so if you install uh, Azure in it, how much megabytes do you need? And if you install the Python variant, how much memory that uh, megabytes that need? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I did not th uh, think about the uh, uh, actual, uh, so I did not have the actual uh, number, exact number, so I need to do some benchmark. Yeah. So, any last questions? None? Okay, then let's thank Dong Su again.